Hi everyone, welcome to Universidad Francisco Marroquín campus. Uh, today we have with us Professor Henry Edmondson. Professor Henry Edmondson is Carl Benson Professor of Political Science and Public Administration and he is the director of the Center for Transatlantic Studies at Georgia College, Georgia's Public Liberal Arts University of the University System of Georgia. Uh, we are going to talk about Donald Trump and the populist phenomenon. And maybe the first question could be, uh, how could we define populism? How could we understand it? First of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, this is an important question. It's uh, something we're asking ourselves. And um, something as much as possible we need to, to try to understand. As far as the, the definition of populism, it's, it's necessarily vague. I think we have to recognize that populism is not a political philosophy, and it probably overstates things to even, even say that it is a movement. Rather, I think it's best called a phenomenon. But as a phenomenon, it does have certain characteristics that are more or less shared by those we tend to think are, are populist. Maybe most conspicuous is that the populist seems to be making uh, an argument against a perceived elite of some kind. Now, however that elite might be, might be defined, the populace seems to have this opportunity to engage in this kind of, this kind of uh, appeal, usually after some sort of a crisis, usually a financi financial crisis. So if we look at the history of those we identify as populist leaders, very often, they have appeared after a financial crisis, especially one in which a significant part of the population feels uh, a, a disadvantage, and they feel that in, in an acute sort of way. Populists also make a, a conspicuous an appeal to the people. Now, mo I, I think traditionally we've tended to think that is the lower classes, although I don't think that's always the case. And Often we also seem to uh, identify the populace with making an appeal to those who perhaps are less educated than other parts of the population. But once again, I, I don't know that that is a, a constant. A couple of, of other things that seem to at least follow in the trail of, uh, of, a, of an appearance of a populist, at least a possibility of some kind of violence, a possibility of some kind of authoritarianism. Sometimes uh, that's understood as a sort of nativism or xenophobia. But I think at that point, we get into a, a kind of a territory that's more difficult and becomes more, more subjective to identify. Mm -hmm. And with this definition problem, could we consider Donald Trump as a populist candidate or is, is, is uh, difficult to, I mean, to make a really good classification of Donald Trump as a populist. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we have to start by admitting that Donald Trump is something of a mystery. He's taken us by surprise. I would never have imagined that he would have come so far in the political process as he, as he has at this point. I remember being asked by some friends in Europe a while back, what's going on with the American election? This is going back a year. And I said, well, what we're all waiting for is for Donald Trump to, to flame out. And at that point, we can begin the real, the, 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 the real uh, process. But that hasn't happened. I, is he a populist? One of the difficulties in answering that question is it is difficult to completely understand his, his thought. In some ways, he seems to be making up, it up as he, as he goes. So at, at this point, I don't know that... It, it, one of the difficulties is that we do not yet have a coherent body of political thought that we have heard from him. Now, e even another difficulty in, in matching the definition to Donald Trump is the, the, the par problem that, yes, in, in, in a very real sense, he is, he, he is criticizing an elite. At the same time, he is an elite. And, and uh, his solution at times seems to be, let's just get the right, the right elites in, in position, and I think that we can we can proceed. It, is there a problem with violence associated with with Donald Trump? There has been the appearance of violence. At times, he has made what uh, we can fairly call careless remarks that seem to perhaps condone 
a kind of, of violence against his opposition. At the same time, Donald Trump has made a lot of careless remarks. So, and in, in fairness, we need to, in some way, try to distill this down to see if he's making uh, an, a legitimate call to some sort of violence. I don't think I have seen that yet. There is another uh, appearance of violence that's been associated with him, but that's come from the opposition. So is he responsible for that? I don't know. It's, it's a tricky question. Has he provoked that? If he has provoked it in a way that most reasonable people could say that it's a legitimate reaction to his candidacy, then perhaps that would be associated with a definition of populism. So I suppose in summary, at this point, he doesn't meet, if there's a classic definition of populism, he doesn't meet it yet. And we also have to put that in historical context. As we compare him with, with others that we have identified historically as, as populist, he doesn't quite match up at, at this point, but um, we're waiting to see. Okay, from an institutional perspective, does Donald Trump uh, represent a real threat to the American political system, or, 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 or let's see, we, don't, we do not know? Well, some people would in, emphatically say yes. They, they've seen enough, they've heard enough, and uh, you hear remarks like, uh, this came from a colleague of mine at, at, at Harvard. He said, if he's elected, I'm out of here. Uh, he's an expert in, in Eastern Europe, has a Bulgarian wife, has a house in Bulgaria, he says we're, we're gone if, 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 the, if, that, if that transpires. But, so there are people who, who are convinced that he is, is a threat. For a large majority of Americans, it isn't entirely clear. Will he be an authoritarian leader? We don't know for sure. What sort of advisors might he gather around himself? We, we don't know. At times, he's given us some indication. There are some people with legitimate credentials who are supporting him and whom he is, has identified as those in whom he either is relying on now or would rely on in the future. I think, at least from my point of view, and once again, I think at this point, it, it becomes subjective. The question we, we have to ask is, does he have the temperament? Does he have the character? Maybe it's even fair to say, does he have the personality that we would associate with the grave responsibilities and the dignity of the office of the U.S. President? And I will admit that is what concerns me the most, especially as it appears that he too quickly takes offense at criticisms uh, that, that he has received. And that's certainly gotten him into some embarrassing situations. So, at least for me, and I know there or others that would, would, that would share this concern, that's what it would come down to. His character, his temperament, his personality. And on that score, at this point in time, I certainly doubt that he would receive my vote. Uh, whether I'm a Democrat or a Republican, that's what concerns me the most. So, Professor, thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for the interview. And it's, uh, it has been a really great pleasure having you here in the UFM, at the UFM. Thank you. It's a lot. been an honor to be here. Thank you very much. Bye bye.